Hi guys, this is Jojo from SC2 News and this is episode 7 of the StarCraft 2 live show in the spotlight. My guest today is no other than Su Lee aka Smix. You might know her from translating at IPL, doing um, parody StarCraft 2 songs like GG Maybe, the one that's in my head for the past two, <laughs> I don't know, yeah, for the past days. Um, also, you might you might have seen her on Team Liquid. Um, she posts amazing blogs. If you haven't seen them, you should check them out. Smix, how are you today? Uh, I'm good. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Um, before we jump into StarCraft and all that sort of, sort of stuff, tell us a little bit about about yourself. Um, where are you from, for example? Um, well, I was born in Korea, but before I was a year old, I moved to uh, New York, and so I grew up in New York. And now I'm in St. Louis because I go to school here, mm -hmm. and so I'll be here for one more semester. Oh, I thought you just graduated, didn't you? I did graduate. So I walked this May, okay. but I still have one more semester left, so I'm not completely finished. Ah, okay. And afterwards, do you know what you want to do? Do you want to continue doing esports related stuff, <laughs> or do you want a real job? <laughs> um, well, I definitely want to continue, uh, you know, esports work as much as I can. Um, but in terms of what I want to do, I guess professionally, well, because mm -hmm. I just don't see translating becoming something full time unless things change. But as of now, I don't see it changing um, completely. But as of now, I th I'm thinking of going into occupational therapy, mm -hmm. and so that would mean I have to go to grad school and blah blah blah. So. Mm -hmm. But you will. That's my plan right now. <laughs> yeah, um, but you will continue doing stuff for for StarCraft too. Um, will you, for example, continue working for IPL if the time allows uh, it? Yeah, IPL, IPL, MLG, as many tournaments as I can. Like uh, this upcoming weekend, I'm going to be at the Red Bull Land, so it's not just limited to like IPL, MLG. It's just basically any StarCraft tournament. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, how did you get into StarCraft in the first place? Um, I know you're, you're, a, real, you're a, um, a regular on Team Liquid. Um, how, yes. did that, <laughs> how did that all come about? When, when did it all start? Um, it started because um, my brother was a really, really big gamer. And he played a lot of different kinds of games and StarCraft was one of those games. So when I was little, I liked to watch him play like over his shoulder. And I didn't like playing myself because I was just really, really bad. And so I would just watch him play and StarCraft seemed really, really fun. And then fast forward to 2008, I was in Korea and I was really, really jet lagged. And at night they play all these different channels that are kind of not safe for work. <laughs> I guess that's the way I'll say it. So I was, I was trying to look for a channel I could watch and I found this channel and it was StarCraft. So I started watching it, and it seems really, really interesting. Um, I didn't even know that Korea had this thing called, you know, of StarCraft. Back then it was Brood War. It wasn't StarCraft 2 yet. So I started with Brood War. I found Team Liquid because um, it, I just, it was the biggest StarCraft site, international foreign team StarCraft site outside of Korea. So after that, I've been watching a lot of Brood War, and then I, it just naturally made the transition into StarCraft 2 when it came out. Mm -hmm. And when did you get, um, get involved with Team Liquid? I got involved with Team Liquid, um, so I started watching Brood War around, I guess, like the summer of 2008. And around the fall of 2008, I found Team Liquid. And so I became like a regular, I guess, lurker. And then, I guess around January, I, I wanted to help contribute in some way. And there was this thing called the MSL, which is like a, I don't know if you guys know, but um, in Brudor, they had these really two big tournaments in Korea. It was the MSL and OSL. And um, the MSL was just one of, they have these group ceremonies where before they start the round of 16, all the players kind of have this group ceremony where they like put each other into groups and stuff. And it's really entertaining. Usually, uh, I think pro gamers, Korean pro gamers, give like very boring interviews, but um, group ceremonies were just a time where people got to show their colors and personalities and BBM if they wanted so I really wanted to translate one of them because I thought it was hilarious and that was like my first step into the TL community and I've just been trying to help out ever since. Yeah, um, I, I received a question from Modpop from TL about your translating. Um, he's, he asks, um, <laughs> have you ever had problems with nerves on stage that um, has affected your translating? Um, 
Uh, for sure. <laughs> of course, yeah. I think it was especially bad at the first tournament that I translated at, which was IPL3. And uh, it was just my first time ever live translating. Like, I had zero experience doing it before. It was my first time, like, on a stage like that where there were, like, all these lights on my face. And um, it was just a very, very surreal experience. I would say I, I didn't screw up so bad in the sense that I, like, messed up completely what they were saying. But I was looking at, like, VODs later, and I noticed I was super... <laughs> I could tell I was really, really nervous. And, um, yeah, I think nerves is always an issue when I'm on stage. And have you ever forgotten anything halfway through a sentence and then made something up, or do you just ask again and...? <laughs> I, I'm not gonna lie, there are some times where I'm like, crap, I don't remember the first part of what he said, but it's, I'm lucky because sometimes, like, the question, I know the answer was probably like, oh, but don't worry, I'll show good games, or uh, I'll just work my hardest, and, and then I checked the VODs later, and it turned out that is what they said, so I was super lucky those times. <laughs> And like, have you ever encountered any unfamiliar phrases, um, you know, different grammar, certain slang, or perhaps even swearing that made you uncomfortable or anything like that? Um, I wouldn't say there's any swearing that they do because they try to keep it pretty professional. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that sometimes they'll use certain adjectives or phrases that I'm not familiar with. So in that case, I'll kind of like be like, oh, sorry, what was that? And then they'll like re-elaborate in like, different ways so I, so I understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. So it hasn't been too big of a problem. All right. Another um, user on Team Liquid asked, um, his name is Wang J. Terran, if I pronounce it right. Probably not. Um, he asked, how come you translate so fluently? Um, did you have to train hard? Um, what's your language background? Um, were you born into a bilingual family? That sort of stuff. Um, yeah. So I was, I was born in Korea, as I said earlier. But I moved to America when I was a year old. And I was just really lucky because my parents were very adamant that I speak Korean at home. Um, growing up in New York, there's a really, really large Korean community there. So I didn't have to, well, they didn't have to learn like perfect English, but that meant that I had to speak Korean at home all the time. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, that helped a lot because even if I'm not familiar with like, you know, every Korean word or, you know, even if my diction itself isn't that, um, I guess, wide, it helps because I'm able to kind of talk Korean in a, I guess, casual, fluent way, and that, that helps a lot when I translate. So, I guess, yeah. I wouldn't say I'm the best translator, though. That's definitely not true, but that helps a lot. Mm -hmm. Growing up with parents that speak and force me to speak Korean. Mm -hmm. A bit of a follow-up question to that was just asked in chat. Um, how do you translate idioms or expressions that don't translate directly into English? Um, do you directly find an English equivalent, or is that hard sometimes? Um, I, I, I try not to do like a solid, like direct translation, because a lot of times that might sound choppy or like a little awkward. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to just like translate it into an English phrase that I think uh, is able to convey best what they're saying. So I just try to uh, translate like the feeling they're, I guess, saying more so than the like a direct, direct translation. Mm -hmm. The chat just says that your um, SMIX has top three translator control. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, thank you. <laughs> and another user asks, um, for someone who's learning Korean as a second language, are there any tips you can you can give them? Uh, tips in terms of learning Korean as a second language? Mm -hmm. um, I would say, well, it depends how dedicated you are going to be to it. Um, I know some people who are really who have been really successful in learning it Korean by themselves, but that's because they were very, very active in terms of working towards that goal. And they, you know, watched dramas, they had a lot of Korean friends that they constantly tried to make conversations with. If you don't have those kind of, I guess, resources, then I would say, like, I don't know, go take a class or go get a tutor, you know. Those teachers definitely know what they're doing, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Another question that was asked, um, there, sorry, there's a lot about the translating. Um, so I'm, no, I'll, of course. I mean, yeah. that's what I do. So. <laughs> I'll, I'll try not to have too much overlap. But um, one that was quite funny, I thought, was um, what's your most embarrassing translating screw up, if you can remember? Uh, um, translating screw up. Okay, I remember one. Oh god, this was so bad. I was really, really surprised no one caught it because it was just like the English translation itself was a ro like the wrong fact. 
So okay. I was really surprised no one caught it, and I'm really embarrassed, like having to admit it now or reveal it now, I guess. But it was back at uh, IPL three. I was translating Inori's interview after he had just beat uh, Hook, I think, mm -hmm. and. Um, the interview was going okay. We were talking about how Inori is known for his good PvP, and then they were like, oh, "Okay, can you let Inori do like an introduction? Because many people don't know who he is." And so he was like, "Hello, my name is Inori. I'm a playing coach for blah 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 blah." And I was so nervous. And there was I don't know if you guys know, but at IPL three, there were these like there was a play play hem booth mm -hmm. with all these like models around. So instead of saying playing coach, I said play hem coach. <laughs> That was like a really, that was like the only big thing. But other than that, I don't think I've had like too big of a screw up. That's actually not that embarrassing. I, I, was, I was hoping for a really embarrassing story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes, I mean, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, so, you started, um, you got in, uh, sorry, you said you got into StarCraft with um, Brood War. Um, we're now at StarCraft 2, soon to be hot. Is in this entire time span, do you have a favorite um, pro gamer, Brood War or SC2, or for both? Um, in Brood War, my favorite uh, pro gamer was Flash, and I don't know if um, you guys know who he is, but he's kind. Of, he's the most, I guess. Uh, he was the best Brood War player, basically. He had the longest dominance, and uh, by the end of Brood War, before StarCraft Two came out, it was like unanimous that he was the best player. So. Um, but I, I want to clarify that when I started cheering for him and liking him, he wasn't like that good yet. So it, I wasn't cheering for the Yankees or anything. Um, but yeah, I think in StarCraft 2, I started out uh, cheering for MMA. I don't know what it is. I just always kind of, I always cheer for the person that I start watching that sport through. Mm -hmm. And I started watching before through Flash, and that's why I have a soft spot for him. And I started watching StarCraft two through MMA, so that's kind of why I had a soft spot, soft spot for him too. It just turns out they're both turned, so I don't know. Yeah. Um, that was a coincidence, but StarCraft two it's a little different. It's hard for me to have a favorite player anymore because I've just gotten to know a lot of them in person, so it, it feels weird. Like I can't really fangirl the same way I did for people in Brood War. Yeah. But mm -hmm. I'll always be cheering for Team Liquid, so you guys should cheer for them too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, turns out both of these players are Terran. Do you play yourself and do you play Terran or any other race? <laughs> uh, I, I do play um, and I do play Terran. <laughs> <laughs> what league so, are you in? Oh god, this is really embarrassing. <laughs> I'm really, really bad. I'm like, uh, like, high silver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really, really bad, but um, I'm trying to get better. I uh, I play a lot of two v two, three v threes, four v fours, and a lot of those times, like my teammates carry me, so we're like in diamond or masters league because they're like really, really good. But, yeah. Do you like? I I always have the same thing after watching a tournament. Um, I always feel like I've picked up a lot of the a lot of the stuff that I saw, and then I go on ladder and feel like I'm MMA or I'm MC or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's a lot harder to do in person, yeah. But um, I think hopefully it's getting better. Yesterday I was playing ladder and I was 5-0, so I was very, very happy about that. Hopefully I will be able to advance in the week. So. Mm -hmm. And what do you think about the the whole Caspa situation now and the Pro League situation? We have this um, mixed Pro League at the moment with a lot of, um, you know, a lot of the Brood War stars coming over to StarCraft to um, did you watch it? Did you like it? I did. I did. I did watch it. I personally, I was just really, really super amped for it because I've been waiting for this because I knew it was inevitable. Um, like I said, my favorite uh, Brood War pro gamer was Flash, and the first Pro League match that he played, he actually did play StarCraft 2. The really crappy part about this is that I actually didn't get to watch because one of my friends came over and she was leaving, so I had to spend time with her. Um, you know, I had to keep my priorities straight, whatever. But I heard he lost, so I guess it's good I didn't watch. But um, I think right now it's still really awkward. Like the it feels the transition from watching Brood War games to watching StarCraft Two games is a little awkward. And I think the players themselves, like you can tell, like it's like hard for them. Like every time they have an interview, they're always talking about how it's really hard to pre prepare for both. Yeah. So I don't know. It's re I honestly don't think it's an ideal setup. I guess it was it was just the only way they could do it because they were trying to find like a transition hybrid season before they transition completely into StarCraft 2. But I don't think it's an ideal setup at all. Um, 
And from what I've heard, the Korean uh, response hasn't been that great either. So. Oh, I actually haven't heard anything from, from the Korean side. Um, I know a yeah. lot of them. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, one of my friends um, was saying that he was reading the like community boards in Korea, and everyone's like really, really upset. Um, like he was saying, it's it's kind of scary to read because usually what happens is you'll find like a lot of people trolling on the forums, but mm. this time there was like zero trolling and it was like genuine like disappointment, like oh like I, I don't think I can watch StarCraft anymore, like blah blah blah. I'm hoping that it's just because it's the beginning and they're not used to it and they just need a little more time. But um, yeah, I don't know. As much as I like it because I've, I'm a StarCraft two fan as well. I guess for the Boudoir fans, it's a little harder to accept. Yeah, um, yeah. a lot of stuff that I've read from StarCraft II fans um, who maybe haven't watched Brood War before um, is the fact that Brood War doesn't look very appealing um, visually, if you know what I mean, you know? Um, yeah. and, I mean, it's, well, a, it's an old game. Exactly, so. yeah. And so I'm not sure if the, if the format was really the best for, for both games, actually. Yeah. yeah, people that don't know StarCraft II will you know, obviously feel like awkward watching it. People that don't know Brutal will feel like even more awkward watching it because it's obviously graphically years behind, so. Yeah. Okay, Beetlelisk from uh, Team Liquid again, of course, um, asks, he has actually a lot of questions. I have a whole list of questions from him. Okay. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can get through them and I'm not sure if I'm gonna ask all of them, but um, we're gonna start off with, what's your favorite food and drink? Food and drink? Yeah. Um. My favorite food has always been Korean food because I grew up eating it every day. And out of Korean food, there's a particular dish called kimchi jjigae, which is basically, I don't know if you guys know what kimchi is, but it's one of the most like staple Korean foods. Um, it's like you take that and you just uh, make like a, I guess, stew out of it. And my mom's uh, kimchi jjigae is just amazing, so that's my favorite dish. And as for drink, uh, I would say Diet Coke. <laughs> I'm getting a little addicted, yeah. <laughs> that perfectly leads into his next question where he asks, how much alcohol do you drink and what's your favorite type of alcohol? <laughs> it it keeps going like this, yeah. <laughs> people think I'm like a huge alcoholic because, um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but I've, I have like posted up pictures of my wine wall and it's pretty yeah. extensive. I, I can show you guys now, actually. I, I see a lot of bottles down there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, do you see it? It's like all over there. Yeah, um, I'm a big wine fan, so I like drinking wine. It's nice for when friends come over, or even if I want to just have a glass or two by myself. But I'm definitely not an alcoholic. I don't want you guys to think I'm an alcoholic. How long? And, yeah. um, and I, it's not just wine, though. I, I enjoy like liquor as well. So, I mean, I enjoy drinking. Just mm -hmm. It's a Korean thing, I think. We enjoy drinking. <laughs> How long did you um, take to get that collection there? I hope it's not a week. Uh, <laughs> No, 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 no. You guys need to understand. This was throughout the entire school year, since September of last year. So. Okay, let's go on. Um, he asked. Do you, you guys, I can see your. I can see what you're saying. I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. He asks, do you have a pet? Um, not here. Uh, but back home, I have a pug, a little doggy, and her, her name is Muffy, and she's very, very cute. But it's very unfortunate because once I got to college. I actually became allergic to dogs and cats. I don't know why. I guess something changed in my body, but I'm allergic to her now, so I can't hug her and kiss her anymore. So that's really sad. It is sad. It broke my heart. And I now she doesn't like me anymore because she thinks I don't like her. But that's not true. I just can't go near her. Oh. <laughs> um, I have to ask this for the automated ban list threat on Team Liquid. Do you like hamsters? <laughs> So I like hamsters. I actually, my first pet was a hamster. We, we went through a whole series of hamsters and um, it was just sad. We had to stop after a while because the mom kept eating the children and it was really heartbreaking. <laughs> so after like, a, after like three generations of hamsters, we stopped. Mm -hmm. um, still, we're still on Beatlesque questions. Um, <laughs> what do you do in your free time other than attending StarCraft II tournaments and translating? Uh, well, like I said, I'm a student, so I go to school, I hang out with my friends. Um, it's weird because for the longest time, 
the StarCraft thing was just like a very, very small part of my life. Like it was like a small hobby of mine. And I really had no idea that it would grow to as much as it's grown now. Mm -hmm. So if I were to say that like my non-StarCraft life was like 90% and StarCraft is like 10% in the beginning, now I think the scale has significantly shifted a little more so that it's not as, I guess, extreme. Um, StarCraft is definitely growing, but I would say my other life is still much more important as of now. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, I remember you talking about that in, a, in, an, in another interview. Um, how do you explain StarCraft and what you do to friends who have no idea about esports and StarCraft? Yeah, it's hard. Uh, <laughs> for the longest time, I didn't mention it to friends because I didn't know how to explain it. But um, now a lot of my friends know. But basically, I just say um, it's a video game that's very, very popular. That it it has a very strong niche community. So it has like diehard fans within the community if you just give it a chance. Um, and then I just show them some vods of like the extreme passion that some fans can have. Like you know those screen those shots of like huge MLG crowds or et cetera, et cetera. So. I just try to show them little by little, and most of my closer friends who know now think it's really, really cool. And occasionally they'll like talk to me and joke around and be like, "Hey, Smix," <laughs> <laughs> and, it's, and it's weird when they say that because obviously they don't know me as Smix. So, yeah. And now I think this is his most important question. Um, Beatles asks, "Do you have a boyfriend? And if yes, how did you meet? And if not, um, what are your thoughts on guys? I don't know what exactly he means." What are my thoughts on guys? That's a little weird. Um, I will not answer that because I, I just prefer keeping my personal life yeah. very private. Um, and I just think it's, it, it's better that way. But mm -hmm. in terms of my thoughts on guys, uh, I think all girls will say this, but as long as you're like a very real person uh, without putting up fronts or without trying too hard to be this or that, just try to be yourself. And you know, if a girl doesn't like it, then you know what? That's fine. I'm sure there's a girl you'll meet that does like it. So. Mm -hmm. um, yourself. Yeah, um, maybe going into something a bit more serious, uh, serious. But um, following up with that, how is it working in a in a very male-dominated field? Um, yeah. Um, honestly, I don't think it's as big of a deal as I don't know. Some people might think it is. As long as you don't make it a big deal, I don't think it's a big deal. Um, as long as you're not stupid about it, like don't go, you know. In, into every workday wearing like nothing don't you know draw unnecessary attention to yourself as long as you are professional about it everyone will treat you professionally um, and in terms of you know going to these tournaments and being surrounded by like a male dominated audience like I really have had no like weird issues with it at all so I don't know people I think overestimate like how weird it's gonna be it's, it's fine usually no so. um, Zatik just uh distracted me with his question. Can you read it? Can you sing Almost Lover on stream? <laughs> Zadik, I'm too shy. Zadik, uh, just at the next tournament that we're both at, we'll go karaoke and I'll sing it for you there. <laughs> um, I, I read in one of your blog posts that you, um, you said you have a very strong visual memory. Um, is there a memory that you want to share um, that you know stuck with you for a long time that's kind of a motivation maybe something important in a way um i guess the strongest memories i have are family related i don't i i don't want to go into them here because they're yeah. very very personal but if you guys are curious um they're all posted on my blog on tl so yeah usually i post those blogs when i'm feeling kind of like sad or something so don't expect happy memories but I will say those memories kind of keep me going and they're kind of like a motivation and like a perspective checker. So if you're interested, they're all on my blogs on TL. Mm -hmm. I'll put down the link to the blog to him and he, uh, he's asking if you have any musical training or if you just pick it up like that. <laughs> <laughs> wow, uh, hmm, that's, that's really funny that he should say that because I really don't think I'm that good at all. Like, I, I would say that on a scale of like 1 to 10, and if over 5 means you're like pleasing to the ears, I would say I'm maybe like a 6, 6.5. And then professional singers, I would say, are like 8, 9, 10, right? So, um, I haven't been trained ever. I just like singing in my room a lot. <laughs> and I grew up like 
you know, enjoying listening to the radio and singing along and stuff. So, um, no, I haven't been musically trained. And each time I release, like, a parody song, I'm always really, really embarrassed because I think, like, it sounds so, like, amateur and bad. But people enjoy it, so I'm thankful, yeah. How did you, how did you get into making parody songs? How did that all start? I know, I know. Um, it started back in June of 2010. This uh, Team Liquid user named Manini uh, private messaged me, and he says he said that he made a parody song for um, the popular pop song Natalie Bruglia's "Torn," and he wrote the he rewrote the lyrics so that it's basically complaining about Bnet too. And so I sang that song, and then after that, I started getting a lot of requests to sing like the female parts of parody songs, and so that's how I kind of got started on the whole parody thing, yeah. Yeah, you've done a lot of stuff with Tempo, for example. Um, yes, I have, yeah. yeah. Um, Jasper just asked in chat, because um, I, I remember you wrote um, about the GG Maybe song, you wrote that you just recorded it on your bed with your, with your MacBook. Did you just yeah. use the built-in mic? Yeah, it's just the built-in mic. I don't have any like fancy equipment yet, so I've just been using my little MacBook. <laughs> it sounds crazy good for that. I actually I might No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um maybe coming a bit to like talking a little bit about Team Liquid. Um you've been on the site for quite a while. You've been contributing a lot to the site. How do you think Team Liquid has changed over the time and with the release of um, StarCraft 2. Do you see a big difference in the community? Is it positive? Is it oh, negative? Yeah. Um, I don't want to. I don't want to like make some general like big overarching statement that it was either positive or negative because it's just impossible to I guess categorize it that way. I would. I would just say that it has changed a lot. Um, I was fortunate enough to join Team Liquid before it made the transition to uh, StarCraft 2 because I was able to kind of. Um, I guess see the community before it and see it afterward. So I guess before I would say it was much smaller, um, much much smaller. It uh, I guess it was all Brewdor fans. So the dynamic was different. There weren't as many tournaments as we have for StarCraft Two now. Like if you look at the Team Liquid calendar nowadays, every day you'll see like five things happening at once. Whether it's the GSL, whether it's like some MLG IPL, whatever tournament. There's always something going on every weekend or every weekday even. But with Brewdor, it was a lot more limited. You had like your pro league matches, maybe, and it was just that. And then occasionally you would have your OSL and MSL, and it was just that. So I feel like it was a little more, um, I guess, people were more loyal to those, I guess, tournaments that they watched. And then after StarCraft II, biggest difference is that the site, uh, like, it just exploded <laughs> in terms of the people that visited the site. And there's so many more people. And um, in the beginning, the whole like Brewdor like versus StarCraft two thing was a little intense, but I think we've reached a good level now. I think, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I don't know. Yeah. Do you do you yeah Do you use Team Liquid as much as you did back then, or? I do. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm on Team Liquid like all the time. <laughs> uh, I would say I check it almost as frequently as I check like Facebook and like Twitter and my email. Mm -hmm. My top four sites are Gmail, Facebook, Twitter, and Team Liquid for sure. Yeah, pretty much the same for me. I, I don't think I've locked out of Team Liquid for a week now, at least. Um, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You apparently follow the the current scene at the moment, of course. Um, what do you ha What do you think about the Caspa MLG thing at the moment? There was a lot of criticism. I mean, there, at the moment, there's always a lot of criticism when new things come into the scene because things are gonna change. Um, what, what's your opinion on that? Do you think this exclusivity um, deal is bad? Is it good? I think that people should... I mean, it's good to criticize and whatever, but I think we should still wait and see how it turns out. It's only been like a few, what, like week or two since the announcement. And I think in, the, in terms of the direction we want to take in kind of combining, I guess, the previous history of Brood War um, and now with the whole future of StarCraft 2, like, that's necessary. And in terms of like whether all the kinks and whatever are figured out, obviously it's going to be a while, but you have to have a start. So I think people should be like um, a little more optimistic about it, and if they have like feedback and criticism, they should do it in like a more not so heated way. Uh, but I think it's good. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. We're just gonna see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Flash has come up a lot in the chat. Um, did you see the Flash game in particular? Did he disappoint? Or yeah, see, that, so that's the game that I that missed. That you missed, uh, yeah. I, I, was, yeah. I was waiting like the entire night to watch it. And then right as he was coming up, I had to turn off the stream because my friend came over. And it was her last night, so. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to see it. But I, I, I'm kind of glad I didn't because apparently people were like disappointed in how he played and stuff. Mm -hmm. But. In my opinion, I, I I probably think that Effort just played much, much better. Yeah. Um, what are the kind of events you're going to next? Um, I know you're going to MLG Anaheim. Um, yes, I am. Are you going to any European events maybe in future? Uh, see, I would love to. I was kind of actually um, talking about maybe DreamHack. Uh, that would have been awesome. But honestly, at this point, because DreamHack is coming up pretty soon after Anaheim, I don't think it's gonna happen. I would have loved to. And if European tournaments want to, you know, hire, need a translator and they are looking to trans, like, you know, use someone who lives so far away, of course I'd be willing. Um, I'm not close to, you know, any area or whatever. It's just always about logistics, about how expensive it is to get me to fly over there. Um, I will be translating at the Red Bull battle battlegrounds that are coming up this weekend. So mm -hmm. I'll be there and I'll be at Anaheim. And IPL five, I presume. Yes, I I think I will be there as well. <laughs> Cross my fingers. I hope they enjoy my work at Ideal Four. So. Mm -hmm. And do you follow any other esports rather um, than Brood War and StarCraft Two? Um, I don't, but it's not because I'm against them or anything. I just really I've just been sucked into StarCraft, so I've been primarily StarCraft oriented. I did get to watch one uh, CS one point six finals just because it was like playing at I think DreamHack. And it was when the StarCraft Two finals uh, were like coming up later, so I was like, okay, while I wait, I'll just watch the CS finals. And I actually really enjoyed watching that too because, as I mentioned earlier, my brother was a huge gamer, and one of the biggest games that he played was CS. Yeah. So it was kind of like, oh my god, this is exactly what my brother used to do. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I haven't watched many other esports, but I'm not closed off to it. Mm -hmm. All right, um, I think that wraps us up for today. Um, mm -hmm. Is there anything you want to say to the community? Any shout outs? Um, I want to say thank you because you guys have been really, really, really supportive despite the fact that I think, in my opinion, I do something that there's plenty of other people and translators that are just as good or even better. And I think I've just been very, very lucky and fortunate that people have been extra supportive, I guess. Um, I'll try to work harder. You know, I'm giving the typical Korean poor gamer answer here, but I'll try to work harder so I can show <laughs> better work for you guys. Um, and if you guys see me at events, feel free to come up to me and talk to me. I'm, I'm, I'm nice. So <laughs> hopefully you guys can come out and I'll see you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much for coming on the show. It, um, it was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you for asking.